Well, good morning, guys. It's uh, the weekend, and uh, the mailman has bestowed upon us the parts we need. So we got a new coil, recoil spring, a breather tube, and a uh, spacer for the rewind. And then we also got a new uh, support bracket for the carburetor. Um, so, just, we're not going to paint this one. Still got the new plastic and everything on it. So, that'll go on after the block has been painted. Uh, the block has one coat of white on it. Um, it has two coats of a high heat uh, engine block primer on it. And uh, I wanted to get that all painted up before the weekend started but this is what's going to go on the underside of the deck uh, probably two or three coats of that and then the paint I'm going to use is this uh, marine coat uh, bright red um, so we're going to try that out the one I used before was like the little cans of rust-oleum I think it was just a regular just red regal red I think it was so we're going to try this out because it does get pretty wet underneath the deck if you don't wait to mow your dry grass. So that is what we're going to be doing today. Um, I had to take out this paper gasket because um, the one I did, the 86 down here, I came in and there was a big puddle of oil around it. And it's because it leaked out underneath the cylinder here. So I took that gasket out. So now there's just two of the regular felt gaskets on the bottom of it. And I figured just because it's an older motor, it needs a little bit, little bit more uh, gap coverage on there. So thank you. Um... Because that would have sucked, having it all painted up and pretty looking, and then you put oil in it, and it just dribbles oil all over your new paint job. So, um, we're going to be working on the underside of the deck. Um, I got, you know, your cheapy, cheapy little brush here. And uh, I've been prepping it with my wire brush on my drill, but we're going to keep going at it, and... Uh, We'll fill you in along the way, so let's get going. Well, here's the first coat of paint on it. Um, it looks pretty good for what it is. I still haven't painted the bottom. This is quite, it's just a quick uh, once over. And it looks like it's fairly nice. So we'll uh, move that aside here. But the main focus today is going to be under here. So this is after I went over it with a wire wheel and uh, pressure washed it, of course. So now I'm going to come in here with some uh, sandpaper and just uh, give it a quick once over. And then uh, after that, we'll come in and give it a couple coats of uh, primer and uh, let that cure up. And it's still actually pretty cool this morning, which is so nice compared to like the 70 degree mornings. It's about like 55. So uh, we'll prep this, wait for it to get a little bit warmer, and uh, give it a coat of paint. So, oh man, I'm running low. I better refuel a little bit. Oh, look at that. Hmm, nothing like some warm coffee on a cold day. So, um, this is this is the primer on the engine block, Duplicolor enamel, and uh, I'm gonna try something a little bit different with the white. I went with the Valspar Tractor Implement Gloss White. 
So we're going to see how this goes. I have used the Duplicolor brand of white on my uh, Tecumseh on the snapper, the rider. And uh, it hasn't held up very well. So we're going to try this out. And if it, you know, cracks and doesn't compete well, well then uh, I'll have to yank the engine off and paint it again. So try new stuff. So uh, let me get some sandpaper and uh, I'll give her a quick uh, sanding on the deck here. Alright, so we're going to be using rusty metal primer. Heavily rusted metal for the ultimate finish. So start with the bottom first is because it's just easier to handle it when there isn't a bunch of attachments on it. And then once you have painted the bottom fully, you can attach all the side plates and everything and then the front uh, the front snapper logo too and you can paint all that. Granted, you'd paint the uh, snapper logo by hand and then put it on there. I learned that from the last one I did. Heck, it hasn't looked that good since the factory. So uh, we'll let this dry a little bit and uh, probably give it one more good uh, one more good coat and then probably lightly sand uh, the ring here just because you want a nice smooth surface for the grass to flow. And if it's rough then it'll get caught and then you'll get build up and you don't want none of that. So, there's that, and uh, work on the engine a little bit more, but it has to warm up just a smidge uh, in order for me to paint it, because I don't want it to uh, crack or do any of that, because that can be very frustrating. So, hmm, what else can we do? Hmm. Not much. I think we're just stuck waiting on paint to dry. So, uh, I'll figure out something. Let me get back to you. Alright, while we're waiting for paint to dry, I figured I'd show you my latest eBay score, which is these two snapper manuals. This one's a 1987, I believe, and this one's a 1986. So, these are actually quite, uh, humorous. But, you know, I mean, nowadays when you buy a mower, you get, like, the owner's manual for the motor and then, like, this little tiny, like, snippet of what the engine is. But you never have, like, this much uh, paperwork 
on something nowadays. Usually you have like a little warranty card and that's it. So um, the Snapper versus Dirt is actually quite educational for those who uh, don't really know much about their power mower. And it just goes through on how you can protect it through the evil dirt that can get into your engine and how to clean your air filter. <laughs> and the mower's got a little bit of a happy face there. We like it when they're happy. So I'll just scan over each section here and you guys can pause it and read it if you'd like. Also tells you how to service them. That's helpful for somebody who doesn't know. <laughs> that looks like the curbside snapper right there. Just a sad little mower. And it gives you a pretty quick education on uh, just how to take care of your mower. Oops. Look at the turtle rototilling his garden. That's priceless. See, I didn't know on this one it says to fill it up until it overflows out the motor. I've always just filled it up to the bottom of the threads. So, hey, you learn something new every day. Then on the back it gives you a, a checklist of what to, what to have. Read and follow all safety instructions in booklets and manuals. So this one, yeah, 1986 Snapper, printed in USA. So I thought that was a good find. And then this one, it just gives you the rundown on uh, proper safety. And here, let me position you guys a little better. <clears throat> on... Uh, how to take care of your power mower and uh, mower, power mower accidents happen because people get careless don't know how their mowers work neglect it or they just don't use common sense whoa they don't use common sense when operating mowers or letting other uh, others operate them so you can avoid tragic accidents for you and your family by not taking your power mower for granted. The mower can hurl small objects as far as 50 feet at over 200 miles per hour, and the blade spins at 3,000 RPM. So then it like goes over how, get to know your mower, take care of your mower, because stuff lasts. You guys can pause it and read it if you'd like. Clear the area. <laughs> Fill the glass tank properly. So I'm, I take it they don't want the guy smoking. So before refueling, disconnect, let the engine cool. Never smoke while filling the gas tank. You know people have done that. I mean, come on. People have done that. I like how the guy's just smoking while they're refilling <laughs> and she's like waving her hand at him and like no he's filling it up with gas or she is she's filling up with gas mowing the lawn safely mowing rules for three types of mowers you walk behind riding mower look before you back up and your electric mowers. Maintain your power mower to keep it running safely. I like it. And it tells you what to do in the fall and what to do in the spring. Consider efficiency and safety when buying your mower. I like this last one. 
Remember, caution and common sense equals power mower safety. Man, that's something dying out nowadays, common sense. So, I thought those were two fun things to pick up. I also picked up another one, but it's like a 1993 that came with the uh, bundle here. And it's pretty much the same thing, but these will uh, go with the owner's manual on my 88. I was temp kind of tempted to, it might sound cheesy, but get a frame and then kind of frame it all in there. But in the meantime, that's uh, that'll conclude, what is this, the uh, third part in the series. And uh, there'll be another part probably by the weekend, well, by the end of the weekend, as we're just waiting for paint to dry. So uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching and subscribing, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.